Let me officially welcome everybody. Uh, we got about 12 people here so far, so either we'll, we'll, people will be trickling in or they'll catch this on the recording, which is fine either way. Um, yeah, so let me welcome you all to the class. Let me just start off by saying that I'm really excited that this class is starting up, that we have our first class. This is one of the one of the, my favorite things that I get to do at ARI is teach this writing class. Um, and, I, and I'm really excited this year that we have auditors joining the class for the first time. Uh, we've opened it up to auditors. And I'm going to say a little bit at the end of the, my introductory remarks here about what I think the value will be for the auditors. Um, so I, I, what I love about teaching this class is the fact that all of you are here. You know, you're not getting college credit for this. You're here um, as an extracurricular thing. And you're here because you want to be here. Um, so I just, I love the opportunity to interact with really motivated, really smart students. And so I, I'm looking forward to an awesome year with you guys. First thing I want to talk about is I want to say a little bit about the goals for this class. And the, so the focus of this course is on the subject of how to communicate on intellectual topics generally to a general audience. Now, you know, you're all in the OAC, so you're all interested in objectivism, and you're interested in using objectivism as the philosophical framework for any kind of writing you do, for your professional careers, whether you're, becoming, whether you're planning to go uh, to become a professional intellectual or kind of an intellectual professional. You know, you're using objectivism as your framework for your life, for your work, for your thinking. And you're going to find yourself in a position of having to articulate your views to people who don't know anything about objectivism. And so, you know, there's a particular challenge in being having a certain philosophical framework and trying to communicate people who don't to communicate to people who don't have that framework. Um, so, you know, that's part of the goal of this class is we're going to we're going to I'm going to teach you some principles and give you give you some practice at doing that. Um, now, let me say a little bit about the practice start of this, because I, I think it's important to stress that writing is a skill, right? It's, it's, this isn't primarily a body of knowledge that we're studying. It's a creative activity, right? So the classes are designed to be sort of a mixture of theory and practice. Writing isn't something that you learn to do by listening to lectures on writing. Right to learn to write, you have to do it and do it and practice and do it again. Right now, at the same time, though, there's no value in just writing an article and sending it off into the ether and never thinking about it again. What we're going to be doing in the class is learning how to think critically about your own writing and and other people's writing. And we're going to work to conceptualize the things that we discover about how to write and, and how to analyze writing. Um, so this class is primarily going to be a seminar class. There's going to be sort of lecture material. There will be principles that we're covering, but there's also going to be a lot of time spent looking at people's writing and talking, giving feedback to people on their writing. Okay. Um, most of the time is going to sp be spent um, talking about articles that you've written. And the idea is for you to see the principles that we're discussing in the wild, sort of in the papers that people are, are talking about. So by analyzing the articles that you and your classmates are writing, in terms of these abstract principles that we'll be discussing, you'll, you'll develop your skill as writers. And the idea is to be to develop more control over the writing process and over the, the, the principles of writing by having a better conceptual grasp of what's involved in in effective writing, there's sort of two um, there's sort of two elements that we'll be covering. One is the process of writing, which will mainly be in the second part of the course, and then the different elements that make up an effective article. Um, and that's kind of what we'll be starting with tonight and doing over the next couple of weeks. Um, so the idea is that we're going to be conceptualizing the principles of writing and then putting it into practice and trying to see those concepts at work in the articles that people are writing. Now, another thing that we'll be doing, another focus of the class um, is on editing, on analyzing and discussing the work, work by other people, okay? 
So part of the purpose is to help you to develop your skill as editors, you know, taking a piece of writing, analyzing it, figuring out whether it's essentially good, whether there are flaws with it, how it can be fixed, you know, what makes it tick. Now, obviously, um, this is a useful skill to have if you're ever in a position of doing editorial work. That, that goes without saying. But the main reason that we do this in the class is it's, it's a critical skill to develop for editing your own writing. Developing skill as an editor is critical because editing is a major part of writing. And <clears throat> when you're editing your own work, you need to be able to get what they call editorial distance from it. You need to be able to look at it as though it was written by somebody else and analyze it as a piece of writing without being all conceptually and cognitively and emotionally invested in the article. You need to be able to distance it. Um, if you've listened to any of Dr. Peikoff's objective communication course, he has a line in there that I love. He says, you have to be able to read your own writing as though it was written by someone you vaguely dislike. <laughs> and I just love the, uh, I love the intellectual precision there because it needs to be someone you dislike because there has to be a certain skeptical eye that you bring to the piece, a critical eye. But you don't want to be, but, it, but you don't want to be hypercritical and nitpicky. So it's somebody you vaguely dislike. You know, I just love the precision of that. Um, so the idea is to develop a critical eye um, for your own writing. Now, I found that the best way to learn that skill is to analyze pieces of writing that were actually written by other people, hopefully not people you vaguely dislike, but you know, other people in the class. And then so you, you come into it already without any of that cognitive or emotional investment. You can look at it more objectively and develop practice at editing. Um, okay, so part of the value of the class is the editorial practice that you'll get. So I do expect people, it's part of the, uh, it, it's, it's part of the syllabus and it's part of the curriculum to read each other's articles, read the articles written by the other students and come to class prepared to discuss them. You know, read them and really analyze them. Um, you'll get the most out of the class if you really worked at trying to analyze a piece, uh, pieces of writing written by your fellow students and, um, and, and work to, you know, apply the principles that we're learning to an evaluation of the article. So you want to come to class ready to state the subject and the theme and your overall assessment of the article. Now, one comment on that before I move on is um, comment about class discussion. So it takes a certain degree of courage to, you know, put ideas down in writing and have them critiqued in front of your a whole group of peers. So it's important that we all take the right attitude in this class, right? The, what we want to strive for in the class discussions is a certain tone of friendliness and benevolence, right? If you have criticisms to offer, we want to do that in a kind of gentle construction, uh, constructive way. So our, and the, you know, the way to think of it is our goal here is for all of us to improve as writers, not to become experts at tearing each other to shreds, right? <laughs> so that's what we're striving for here. The last thing I wanted to do in terms of the administrative stuff is just say a word to our auditor. So once again, I, I I love the fact that we have auditors this year. Welcome to the class. And I want to say a little bit about, about what I think will be the value of the class to you. <clears throat> um, so obviously the one difference that you'll experience is that I'm not going to be giving you grades and I'm not going to be giving you feedback on papers. But um, there is a lot that you will be able to extract from the class. So for the, for the weekly homework assignments, um, you know, feel free to do the assignments, post them to the same discussion board that the students uh, use, okay? For those assignments, I'll either, like, I'll either be going over the assignment in class, um, like we're gonna do tonight, or later in the semester, there'll be somewhere I'll be posting sample answers to those assignments. And, you know, 98% of the value that, that, will you, that anyone will get from the assignments is, from the feedback that I give in class or from comparing their answers to the sample answers that I put um, on, the, on, the, uh, on the website. So you can get that, you know, the same as the graded students. Um, so I think you'll get a lot of value out of, out of doing the homework. And, and, and now, that, now you're auditors, so this is optional. You don't have to do it. If you want to do it, it's just, you know, more value that you can get out of the class. 
I mentioned the objective communication course and exam. You can feel free to take the course, write the exam, um, and that'll be something that you can get out of the class. And then, and then the paper discussions, when we talk about student papers in class, you know, again, the one difference is that I won't be giving you feedback on a paper that you're writing, but remember, but you can feel free to write a paper. You can post it to the class board. And if you want to solicit feedback from your fellow students, that's totally fine. I'm totally happy with people using the class website as a forum for posting articles and getting feedback on that. Um, you know, even for the graded students, most of the time in the class is, you know, you're, the students are writing only two papers. Most of the time in the class is going to be spent talking about students written by, uh, papers written by other students anyway. And as auditors, you can, you, can, you can read the papers, you can analyze them, you can participate actively in class discussion, and you'll get the same value out of that as the other students who didn't write that paper. <laughs> so, um, so I think there's a lot of value that you'll get in the class as auditors, and as I said, I'm really glad to have you here this year. Okay, so our main uh, focus for the rest of this class is going to be talking about the homework assignment. And this is going to plunge us into a discussion of subject and theme. Okay, now, now the basic idea here is really straightforward, right? The subject is what, it, what the article is about, and the theme is what the author is saying about that subject, right? And the assignment was not meant to be too difficult. I'm sort of easing you into the course. Um, I do want to mention, I'm easing you into the course. The, the challenge level will pick up, and you'll see it sort of gradually ramping up over the next couple of weeks. Um, but this first assignment was not meant to be super difficult. Um, generally, I think people did a good job on the assignment. And, you know, this will be reflected in the grades for the graded students when I post those. Um, but it'll be, you'll hear it when we, in, the, in the feedback tonight as well. Okay, so the basic idea of subject versus theme is fairly straightforward. The assignment wasn't too difficult, but, so there are some subtleties here, uh, and this is the reason for making this the whole subject of the class discussion. I think like many things that, that seem fairly simple and straightforward at first glance, there's actually a ton of subtlety and complexity you would be amazed at, at the kinds of challenges that writers can run into that flow directly from confusions about the concept of subject versus theme. Um, and you would also, you would be surprised at how easy it is to fall into the error of failing even to have a clear subject in an article. You know, when I was developing as a writer, I can't tell you the number of times I would, I would hand something in, you know, I'd hand something in and Ankar would look at it. And the first question he would ask me is, what's the subject of this piece? And I'd be like, oh, you know, and I would realize, I don't even know what I'm talking about here. Um, so, you know, it seems obvious, subject is what it's about, theme is what you're saying about it. But there's a lot of complexity in here. That's why we start with this. Okay. Now, again, before we jump into the details of the article, um, I want to start with some just preliminary general issues, and these will these are fairly minor. I think they will probably strike you as sort of pedantic and nitpicky, but again, I, there's a there's a method to my madness here, and there's a, there's a, I have strong reasons for for these points. So, in the instructions for assignment one, okay. Um, I mentioned three requirements that when, when you state your subject and your theme in the assignment, there are three requirements that they have to meet. Okay, the subject needs to be a word or a short noun phrase. So the subject should not be a complete sentence. It should just be a thing, right? A, a word, a noun, a noun phrase, something like that, okay? Your theme should be a complete grammatical sentence, not a fragment, right? Not a noun phrase or a, it's not a thing. It's a subject and predicate. It's what you're saying about the thing. So the subject is the thing. The theme is the, the sentence that says what you're saying about that thing. Okay. Now I also mention that the, um, the noun phrase for the subject should be exactly the same as the noun phrase that you use in the sentence where you state your theme, okay? 
And I did gave the example, right? If the subject is sweet red cherries and the theme is sweet red cherries are yummy, right? Not sweet red cherries or yumminess is associated with sweet red cherries. There, the grammatical subject is yumminess, right? So now almost everybody did fine with this. There were a couple of problems and I wanna call them out um, and, and mention them. Now, again, this might seem really pedantic, but this is actually really important, especially for people developing as writers. Um, wording your subject and theme in this way and formulating it like this is, it makes a massive difference. And you'll see over the course of the year what a massive difference it makes. And what I've found teaching this class for almost 15 years is if I make a really big deal of it on day one, um, people don't have a problem with it going forward. So why am I making such a big deal out of this? You will see over the course of this course just how valuable it is to use this framework in this format, okay? Um, it, it really makes a big difference. And, and there are theoretical reasons why this makes a big difference, which will come out over the next couple of weeks. Okay, so now, now that's all the sort of preliminaries. Now let's jump into the articles themselves. 